I think there's been some some really good stuff these last two games. Um, and obviously, good good matches um, for the for the spectators been um, fairly close, but yeah, just not enough to get over the line on both occasions. So, um, as I said, a lot of positives to take out of both fixtures. Um, obviously, a few different. Uh, matchups and, and personnel being used across the two and, and we've got um, another chance on Friday to I guess two more chances um, before that first game of the World Cup to either settle on um, some matchups, get a last look at, at England um, before we, we take them on in the World Cup. What does it do to the confidence of the group going into the next big tournament of the year? A couple of tough losses to a to obviously a quite a strong nation, but what does it do to the confidence of the group? Not much to, to be honest. Um, We've spoken thoroughly these, I guess, the four fixtures about. Um, obviously, we've had a different matchups um, between the four games with with the West Indies and, and England. The big, obviously, we want to win these series and we want to win these these games. Um, but the big focus is the World Cup, and, and obviously, we know the know when we play these these two. Well, play when we play England, and if we play West Indies. So, um, yeah, look, it's it's disappointing to to lose a series, um, but. The chat over the last period of time is is about the World Cup. Which you didn't open tonight. Was that a set plan to blow the right arms against Tad Hale and Butler? Yep, you'd have to ask Finchie that one. Um, was there yeah? Was there much chat about it in sort of bowling meeting this morning about trying to yeah? Was it an experimentation? Um, yeah, there's been a bit of chat, um, more so around obviously all, the, the whole attack being flexible and and potentially playing different roles throughout the World Cup. So that was another occasion tonight where obviously things changed. Um, so I guess the, what we've seen in the in recent time anyway, um, and that could change throughout the World Cup. So um, given a bit of, uh, more so of a different role across the board tonight to see that match up obviously with England. Um, and obviously give, give Josh the first over against Joss and, and Hales. So, yeah, that, that could, it could look the same when we play them later on in Melbourne. It could look very different again. It's, I think we've got a great attack that can be flexible and play different roles at certain stages against different teams. So um, just another good hit out to try something different tonight against a very strong team. Do you feel you just sort of had the fact you're bowling in the middle over because you've done it in your role? I think it's in the middle has been a role that I've played on different occasions over the last period of time. Um, I mean, coming from over the last few years, it's it's probably changed from two in the power play and two at the death to, to one in the power play, two in the middle, one at the death. Um, and it's looked different and different stages in different conditions against different teams. So, as I said, I think that between the the five guys that, that normally bowl the majority, um, we can all play different roles against different matchups. So um, I think that's a strength of ours and... and um, Look, we didn't quite get it right on these two occasions, but I think it leaves us in a good position to for the World Cup, having tried it now in, in competitive fixtures. Mitch, how impressed were you with um, Tim Davis? Uh, obviously, he's so, you know, like young in his Australian career, but just that maturity to really sort of steer the chase more than just smash the sixes. He was really, you know, sort of steering the team through. Yeah, it's been it's been good for him, for him to have that exposure on the, the international stage. You, you do say it's a young international career, but he's played a lot of cricket around the world against a lot of different good players so um, he's certainly well experienced in that regard whether it be that power game that he does possess or having to to approach it slightly differently when when he needs to take a bit of time or, or to maybe suck up some pressure so yeah it was a it was a good innings from him today um, you know, I'm sure he would have loved to have get us gotten us over the line um, but no again another great hit out for him in Australian colours and I'm sure he'll he'll take that on board for the World Cup. What did you make of Marcus Thornton's performance tonight? Obviously, brought a bit of energy with the ball and then momentarily with the bat. Um, is there a sense that his position in the World Cup squad might not be as concrete as it was 12 months ago? Well, I don't have to pick teams, so I um, don't have to worry about that. In terms of his performance, um, it's great to see him be really impactful with the ball. We know how strong and impactful he is with the bat. Um, to come off a little bit of an injury layoff with his side, to be as effective with the ball, um, that we know he can be, it was great to see as well. So we know what an all-round package he is. Um, again, he's, he's played a lot of cricket for Australia and, and no doubt he'll, he'll play a big part of the World Cup. Josh? I know these last four or five games have all been as round as he's going to play World Cup games on, but what sort of feel are you getting about what sort of World Cup it might be? Do you think it's going to be pretty 
that dominated with 180, 200 being needed, or do you think you, the bowlers, are going to be able to have quite a big say in how things come out? Uh, it's a status game. Um, judging by the 2015 World Cup, they were extremely high scoring games. Um, yeah, I, I, who's to say it's going to be ball or bat dominated? I mean, it's very obviously very conditions based. I'm sure there'll be flat wickets. It's just going to mean the bowlers have to show a bit more skill and a, a bit more brains, I guess, and, and try and work, well, not work over batters, but stay a step ahead. So, um, obviously, I thought we saw a fair bit of that tonight from both sides with changes of pace and variations. It wasn't just your, yeah, an out pace and bounce that, that created difficulty for the batters. So, um, yeah, obviously, we don't play a fixture here, but um, we will at the Gabba, which was a bit of an indifferent wicket being an early early summer Gabba wicket. Um, and obviously the guys saw saw what uh, Optus had to offer. So, yeah, it's I'm not sure you can put your finger on which way it's going to go right now, but um, I'm sure conditions will dictate. Um, Mitch, what's the key to timing your run through a World Cup, you know, mentally and I suppose form-wise as well? Because, you know, you've, you've had a lot of uh, last year's World Cup, there's barely any lead-up matches. This time you've had quite a lot of lead-up games. Yeah, how, how do you sort of make sure that you're not peaking too early? Nowadays in, in World Cups, I don't think you can slack off at all. You, you can't afford to lose games. Um, we saw that in the last one. We obviously lost to England and, and it was almost like we played a final every game from then on. Um, England lost one game and missed out, I think, didn't they? So, Or India did, I, I'm not sure, I can't remember. But um, yeah, the, Tournament play is different than the bilateral um, series, but I don't think now you, you can afford to um, to lose two games because your, your tournament's over. Um, so yeah, it, it's been different. Like you say, we've actually had some games in the location we're going to play a World Cup. It's not been um, you know playing games in Australia to play a subcontinent World Cup, which is which is nice. Uh, I'm sure both teams will be happy about that. So will the West Indies. Um, but in T20 cricket, I think it just brings everyone back to the pack where you know there could be one moment through a game that can can change a result. Um, yeah, obviously you're going into World Cups to win every game. So I, I, I don't have an answer for when you should be peaking. You just need to win. Hopefully get to the last game of the, the tournament and win that.